Hello again. I'm just going to make sure I can see everything again. And have a quick drink. saying live or I'm just not getting it yet on my laptop let me refresh and in my monstrous book I didn't probably think this through is it gonna fit on my camera let's have a look hey, squeeze squeeze I can see it. Right, I'll just hold on a second. Um, new journal, giant journal. Okay, I'm going to do some work on my cover. Let me get this more in the shot. And I'll put these down aside. Hello, if you're joining me again, I'll just get myself set up, ready? Hello Pia, hi Nellis, hello Margaret, hello Magdalene, thank you for coming back again. So, um, this is the giant version of the journal you normally see me use. So can I get to my journal? Let me see. So this is the kind of normal size I use uh, in the Dina Wakely um, media journal. So different papers. Okay. And this is the giant version. So I thought it'd be really cool to have a big size as well. So you can get this in the shop as well as the regular size. And there is also a smaller square journal with just the um, watercolor paper in, I think it is, is it watercolor? Um, the cotton rag, I think, sorry. So these are the different materials you get in here. So burlap canvas, cotton rag, watercolor paper, and craft services. So it's really cool for experimenting in but i'm using it kind of as a canvas today i suppose i'm going to be working on the cover so i'm just going to take this off hello margaret right so nice surface i was trying to find a canvas and i thought oh do you know what actually let's do something with this right there we go so i'm going to firstly be building up some interest to actually paint and um, to use my paints on um, i'd like to do some stenciling in the background first um right i think before we do that we need to put some gesso on so i'm gonna get just clear gesso in a minute. <laughs> there we go. Hello, Mandy. So, this is Fabrica Deco clear gesso. Um, you get a brush, I want a biggish one. And I said to you before, I like to add a little bit of water to mine, it's quite thick for a clear gesso. So I'll add a little touch of water. So don't be worried that this looks white at the moment. Once it's dry, it will be clear. And I'm just going to give a rough old coat. I'm not bothered how it looks. I'm just wanting to give a protective layer on my front page. I kind of had a feel of the cover and I think it probably would have been fine without Jess so it's a hard cover hello 
Matt, who have I missed? Mandy, hi Susa, hi Cleo. Ooh, lots of people joining, that's nice. Uh, yes, it's a very hard back cover, so it's designed to be knocked about a bit. So I, I reckon it probably would have took my mediums fine, but I just wanted to be safe. go that'll do right now we're going to give that dry so that's just some gesso on there so that we're protecting that cover just in case anything was to soak through um and ruin a page in our journal hi carolyn and um, somewhere here i have a heat gun hiding on amongst all this stuff here we go so i'm going to give that a blast Handy that you're on, Cleo, because you can remind me the name or something. I'm going to be using your big clock piece that I've wanted to use for a while and I've not had anything big enough to use it on yet. Could you please remind me what it's called? Because I've taken it out of the packet. Right, just get this dry and then we can start having a play. It'll leave like some little bits that look white still um, will disappear once they're fully dry. I'm going to be altering the front of my giant Dina Wakeley Dina Wakeley journal. I'm just putting some gesso on to protect my cover. Get that water up. Right, that'll do. here actually I've got this diamond stencil from AB Studio that's ID82 and there's a cog stencil because I'm going to be using cogs called Dance of Gears from 13 Arts I'm pretty sure these are both in stock so I'm going to use both it's quite a big surface so let's have a look I would need some modeling paste that would be a good idea so I'm going to use a Fabrique de Carreau texture paste, my very favourite texture paste now I've decided. I used a different one the other day and it made me realise how much I love the Fabrique one. The, you know, it was fine, it was perfectly good, but it just wasn't quite the same. This one really puffs up nicely and holds its shape really well. So I'll start with this diamond stencil. And... I will, I go randomly, I don't like to use the whole stencil. Um, this is a big area on the diamonds, so you need to be a little bit patient while you fill them in and hold it nice and well. Okay, and I'll keep that paste there and use it again in a minute. And let's move it down. Yeah. 
right, that's good. And maybe slightly here too. Okay, that's enough of that one. I'll just wipe my stencil quick if I can find a space on my desk. <laughs> Kind of took up the whole desk today. Not a very good desk though, to be fair. So if you can get your stencil straight in some soapy water, that'll get that off nicely. Um, you don't really want to do it with baby wipes if you can help it, so you don't damage them. It's just a quick solution when you're demoing. Right. And we'll dry that because I don't want to dunk the uh, other stencil in what I've already done. Hello, Marion. Hello, Maria. Got a really chunky bit there, haven't I? That'll look nice. And you can play around with how thick you build up the paste to get some different textures. And you can see now the um, gesso has pretty much gone clear now. Now it's properly dry. I'll just avoid that section and let that dry properly. Right, we'll get the cog stencil. And uh, let's do some bits of cogs as well. So this is just my kind of background. Just want something in the background. Don't want to just go straight in with my chipboards and things. here as well can go on to the diamonds a little bit and we'll do a little section here as well I don't know if you can see right to the bottom of my book it's a very big book there we go. Again, I'll just give that a quick clean. Um, I should fold the book. This one is this one is uh ten. The cover is ten inches by fourteen point two five inches. Wow. Pages are nine point seven five by fourteen inches. So this is a big beast. So taller than a scrapbook paper, but it's going to be so much fun to create in. Hello, Barbara. Okay, just clean all this up. Right, texture paste can go. And now we need to dry fully this time because we're going to be using those lovely paints in a moment. Oops. And it just puffs up so nicely. You can watch it as it dries. You can see it poofing up. I really like it. If anyone has any questions at any point, do give me a shout. Hello, Jennifer. I'm 
Right, so I'm going to use the some of the magic paints now. I've pulled out a few colours. Um, there's quite a large range. Um, they're similar to the colour glows that we also have. Um, but these have a more natural undertone. So they're either a silver, copper or gold uh, shimmer to them. So they're like Mika, the glittery bit. But then with coloured pigments, so I'll show you some in a moment. So, for instance, this one will be a green colour with a gold shimmer. Okay, so at the moment it just looks gold, but you'll see. Hello, Kathy. Just got this really thick. So I would say, um, yes, same concept as the colour glows we have, but um, different look. Colour glows are very, very vibrant. Um, these are bold colours, but they're, they're just different. Um, if you have a look back at some of my demos of using colour glows on here or on our YouTube, you'll see what I mean. And if you get some and have a play yourself, you'll see what I mean. Okay, that should do. So, I've got some colours, so let's have a look. I'm going to keep that for a different time. That was more for myself, I just wanted it. So these are the colours I'm going to use. So we've got Malachite. Uh, it says cask on here, but it's box on the website. This is the translation. Uh, turquoise gold and indigo gold. So all the gold uh, base, you can see they all look gold. But they've all going to have blue-green tones. So you can see on the front, it's suggesting how they're going to look. Okay. So we literally, we just pop the lids. They've got a, sh these have a shaker. 13 arts are a, a pot you open and then scoop out. Okay, so that's another difference. You may prefer one to the other. Okay, so that was indigo. So at the minute, doesn't look like anything, does it? Uh, malachite. And these are very, very strong. So don't go too crazy. And turquoise gold. Okay, and we'll stop at that for now. And we can always add more if we need it. Okay, water spritzer. And here we go, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Yum, 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 yum. And you can see I'm on a black journal as well. And these are showing up nicely. Um, the clear gesso will help as well because it's sitting on the top rather than trying to sink in. Um, but it's the all the me the shiny the Mika in them is helping you to see it on that black. Hello Karen. And I'm gonna pick my book up and I'm gonna roll this about. And you'll see on the texture paste, it's going on a little bit, but not completely because texture paste has a semi-resist. Okay. It's not fully resisting like a, a gloss gel would be, but it does have the resist. So we won't fully cover that. But that's good, I think, here. We're going to get a, like different tones. I'm going to use my paintbrush now to help sort of encourage that a little bit onto the paste. We need to be careful as well, especially this thicker bit. It was still a little bit wet anyway. Um, but this paste, we don't want to get it too gloopy, so we will need to stop and dry. Um, even if you decide you want to add more, give it a dry before you start adding more water, or you're going to lose that nice crisp stenciling that you've worked hard to get. Okay, so I'm going to stop now and dry. Oh, more people coming in. Uh, I think I said hello. 
If not, hello Caroline and Judith. I think I said hi already there. <laughs> I have a terrible memory. Right, I'm gonna give this a blast now. Um, so this is like a subtle colouring to our background. As it dries, the gold will um, be more visible. Um, but we're going to add more colour once we get to our chipboards. So just wanted something in the background. So we did wet this quite a lot. If it's um, too wet in places, you feel that the heat gun is just not cutting it, you can pat a little bit off. Ugh. I had a load of paste on there apparently. That's okay, I can wipe that off. <laughs> Clean wipe, you can wipe it off. Don't use a dirty one and put your paste all over your book. So can you see, like here, the gold is really coming out now. Very nice. Looks like um is it labradorite the stone? Oh thank you Carolyn. Um and like lapis lazu, I think. I uh, don't quote me on these, but you know the stones that have that kind of mother of pull look and I think lapis lazu is the kind of black looking like flaky rock that looks different when you move it around the light. It has that sort of quality to it on the black. Um, when you use them on white, as you'll see on the texture paste, you see more of the pigment rather than the shimmer. So you can play around with different looks with these. They're very versatile things to have. I like them because they're not so messy, because they're powdered rather than a spray or you know something more liquidy. You can mix them into your gels, into your paste. Like I could colour the paste before I used it by mixing it into there. Um, all sorts of uses for them. So a great piece to have in your kit. And because they're two tone, with this flat colour and the shimmer, you'll get different effects depending on what surfaces you use them on as well. So really good value for your money, I think. Something great to have in your kit. And they're very cheap. Uh, these and the colour glows are very, very cheap, I think, in my opinion. I think we're almost there. And then we're going to start building up some layers. More towards the middle of my piece. I will lift this up in a minute so you can see how it looks. If you can get that shimmer a bit more. Can you see that? Pretty. Let me get the book back. Right, so let's begin. Yeah, they're like a shell, like the inside of a shell. Exactly, really pretty. So I was thinking to have this one in the middle. Um, I haven't got the number on here, forgive me. This is one of the grey board AB Studio pieces. So you need to pop bits out and they come out very, very nicely. I've not touched wood yet broken anything on them see it's just coming out with no problem especially on the gray board because it's thicker okay so we can start popping out all these little bits um if they're sort of really small you can just get that pokey tool again just work these all out and keep all the little bits because they're great for using to layer your work up. Okay. So I probably should have done this before I came on camera thinking about it. But I just wanted to show you how easy they are to get out. Um, 
some I'm quite fussy and some brands I love the designs but I got fed up of breaking them I'm a bit heavy-handed I've got big fingers um, and it was just you know what's the point in having a really pretty delicate piece if you're gonna break half of it so I was wasn't happy with some of those um, but these and a uh, and hobbylicious I've not had any issues with hello Glenda so about halfway there now okay. it's quite satisfying doing this though I'm to decide do I want I don't know if I want the whole piece though I might keep some another project mm, no it might it might be all right let's let's carry on and see <laughs> what are we all up to this weekend then any plans? What's going on in your lives at the moment? Are we all good? Everyone okay? Um, I, I had a bit of a down week last week. Uh, I'd been home, so I guess I just, you know, it's lovely to see everyone. But then it's always hard when I come back because I miss everyone terribly. And just worried about things, you know, what's going on at the moment. I'm not going to talk about it, but... But um, yeah, today and yesterday felt really, really happy. So yeah, good. Uh, and it does make such a difference at work, doesn't it? When you're in a good mood, it goes so much quicker and is much more pleasant when you're happy. But I'm nearly there. And this weekend, I'm going to be ordering everything well pretty much everything for the online retreat we're doing this year um so if you have changed mind and decided you want to come you're not too late so drop me a message um you can find all the details in our events section it's going to be the first weekend of october on facebook in a secret group that only members people joining will have access to so it's not something you know anyone can watch if they've not paid to join us so don't worry about that and we will be doing an all-day class with Kasia and two half-day classes with myself and Lorna and it's gonna be good right just these tiny ones now The knees are coming out well. See these little teeny ones? It's still not breaking. It's been cut very well. Very good cutters, whoever have done that for them. Okay, so that's that piece. Which I've not decided yet. Oh, that kind of looks good at an angle. Right, so we'll just plop that there for a moment. And definitely keep this bit very handy um i've got another piece from ab studio which I accidentally knocked but i thought this could look good on there same kind of theme so i'll just finish those couple of bits off so this is the chipboard so really the chipboard can be used as it is um it's more delicate so it's uh, nice to use as is um but and it does take paints and things but if you really wanted to go heavily into paints or paste etc on these pieces you would probably be better with the gray board that's a bit more heavy and durable can handle that a bit more so i've got that piece um i've got some hobbylicious bits so i've got steampunk piece here and my main piece, I think, I haven't decided yet, is going to be this 
piece from Hobbylicious, and I have, do forgive me, I've forgotten the name of it. It's on our website under Hobbylicious brand. And there is a little other little piece with a handle. I might have used that for something else. So there's a, a third layer with a handle, so I might have that. Um, what else have I got here? Um, I've also got the A4. Oh, I've just thrown all that on the floor. Never mind, I'll tidy that up later. <laughs> the A4 cog sheet from Hobbylicious, which I only realised today I have not yet used. So this is um, the light board, similar to chipboard. Um, so I'll pop a few of those out. Now these come with tabs so that you can get them out without breaking them and then you just trim the tabs off. So let's pull out a few of those in different sizes and we shall begin layering and sticking. Okay, what should I do? Gosh, I've got a lot of mess to clear up now. On my floor. <laughs> All good, let's have a quick slurp. Right, so let me sort out my desk a little bit. Okay, right. So let's trim those um, chipboards firstly, because I have a habit, if I don't do it straight away, I forget, and then I stick them down <laughs> with the little bits on. So they have just this little tag here. You need to just trim that off, and then you get the neat piece. So you get it out without breaking it so i think that's a good compromise they've done there so you don't risk damaging the actual piece do, do, do. Whew, it's very hot in here when you've got heat going on in this weather doesn't it get warm Right, okay, so, oops, we'll start with the big pieces first, so let's move all of this, okay, so I need to decide, maybe I could just use part of this keep that other piece for something else I'm trying to do it so I'm not covering all my stenciling as well because I don't want to lose all of that okay something like that And these two can kind of echo each other and then we'll use the little cogs around I have knocked this about a bit so it's a little bit wonky I might have to trim some of those bits I think or I've bashed it a bit in my box so it won't come to you like that right that's better okay yeah so something like this I think I'm going to go for um, making use of the length of this book yes that looks nice and then the smaller cogs after so let's start sticking this down and we're going to use those scraps as I said to help create some um, dimension between the layers um, now this is uneven because I've got the modeling paste on there um, so a gel is definitely going to be the best thing to use i'm going to be using my favorite 3d texture gel 3d gel rather sorry transparent gel from fabric deco which is now back in stock you'll be pleased to hear we were out of stock of that so it is back and where it's very uneven we can be a bit more generous with the gel to get it to stick so i'm just going to start by flipping it over and i'm just going to tap gel in not everywhere just 
enough parts so that the piece is going to be able to grab hold of the book and um, it will dry clear so if you are a bit heavy handed and it sort of squirts out on the top don't worry um, you can scrape off some of it and then the rest just leave it to dry clear don't panic okay so I wanted this piece kind of here okay and what I'm going to do is just put something a bit heavy on there for a minute to get that to stick and while that's sticking hello Wendy and Leslie I think I said hello to everyone else it was all working still sorry I switched off for a second there while that's um, working I will get the next piece so that was going to be this one um, and I'm going to let's see I'm going to put on the back there some of those bits of board that I've got um, to add a bit of dimension so we'll do that while we're waiting for that so I'll cut up some bits smaller so I've just got these little bits of my um, board that are left from this piece and just slicing into some thinner bits um, it does the same sort of job as foam dots would do on your paper craft projects just by adding it with gel we can be a bit more certain that it's going to actually stay on there um foam anything with that like adhesive they do eventually dry out and um it's not good for long term uh, especially when you're working with heavier pieces we want something we can be certain is going to stick I'm just trying to avoid all the holes um, going on the wider parts and just add in some bits of the board and where else can we stick some there's a little bit no that's a bit too okay let's see how this is doing it's, i think it's going to need some more because that paste okay i think we're okay that side that's not doing too bad but this side we need more this out okay and we can also to help it along its way hello Sam we can give it a blast with our heat gun as well so we can start the gel drying just be careful not to burn yourself oops <laughs> We'll just help it stick while we're working. Okay, I think we've almost got got it stuck enough to carry on. same on this side if we were going flat onto the book without the paste it would be easy to get it to stick 
Um, it's just because it's so uneven. It needs a bit more help. Okay, and we'll do the same. Thank you, Magdalene. careful if you're using metal obviously to hold this in place don't then go and touch it and burn yourself okay that looks better right now we can start playing with this piece okay those little bits of boards i've got on are in the right place to just raise it a little bit um we could do with a little bit here let's see if we can get some on this number three we'll find some nice thin bits and a bit good okay so it's just raised it a little bit and again I'm gonna go in with gel on all those raised bits that I've stuck on this is not too heavy so I think just contact in a few places is going to be okay okay now we need something more under this bit because it hasn't got this to sit on so it's flapping about a bit so we just need to build up a bit more under there Perfect. There we go. Oh, I've just stuck it all in my hand. Hello, Louise. Right, so that's that layer. Now we wanted these two. Yeah, so I think that one will just put on flat onto the other piece. Um, you could gesso these off before you stuck them down, which would probably be a sensible thing to do. I like to make life difficult for myself, so I'm going to do that in a moment. That one's going to go there. And then this one on top of that. So I'm just, again, tapping on bits of the gel where this is going to make contact onto the other piece. And it's strong stuff, so don't worry if everything's not stuck to everything. As long as you've got enough on there to hold it, that will be fine. Okay, and you could take a little paintbrush if you like to get off any of those little bits of gel I don't let it worry me too much I'll get off the really big bits I can see I just use a wipe and just hold on to my work as I do it okay so now I'm just going to give that a quick blast and then I'll stick on my um, smaller cogs and we should get this gessoed and we shall start playing with the other paints. Um, although saying that, with the paints that I'm going to be using, we don't need to gesso actually. Um, they cover really well. So actually I can be lazy this time. So normally I would gesso everything now that I've stuck on. Um, but I don't need to because I'm using the rustic paints. They will cover without. So I can 
can actually skip that step today and be lazy. Excellent news. Okay, so smaller cogs. So remember these we picked from the Hobbylicious A4 cog sheet. I really love this one. This one appealed to me straight away. Ah, why not put them like that? No, the card just sat next to it. There we go, now it's on. Right, so let's stick these on as well. And again, just a touch of gel on the back and we can pop them around. We can go on different layers. And don't worry, it all looks a bit higgledy-piggledy, like the colours, this brown and then a white and... Don't worry because we're going to paint this now so we don't need to worry about that. Um, if you were to use something that's not got full coverage then definitely go ahead and gesso first and that will take you back to a blank canvas um, colour wise and you'll be able to recolour as you like. One, two, three, four... One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, I've got to think about it. I need odd numbers. Seven. So we can... Well, we've not stuck it all down. It's an advantage. We can slot things in now. And this one can go under there. Okay, lovely. Right, I'm done sticking for now so i'm going to put the lid back on try and close any of your paints mediums as soon as you can once air starts getting in it's going to dry them out if they're water-based things especially right again i'm just going to give it a quick blast And then I'm going to be playing with rustic paints. So rustic paints are, they are an acrylic paint, um, but they're matte. Um, they are very, very textured. So um, they're water-based. And they just have these grainy bits in which help you create the look of rust or patina or like mould or stone, like metal. Hello Michelle and Mary. Um, they're really, really cool. I love them. Okay. So I'm going to be starting with concrete. So this is a very pale grey colour. So hopefully you can see the little grains in there and I'm going to get a paintbrush um, one of my older sort of ones you don't want to be using like you know your finest water colour brush with these paints because they are gritty and I'm going to be pouncing this on so I'm not going to be being too delicate or worrying too much about anything and I might use some of the magic paints again at the end over the top so any the like little layers I've missed I'll be able to use the magic paint to capture that because it, once I spray it it will run down into those layers and cover it all up with any of the bits I've missed So you can see it's quite easily covering that wood colour, so not necessarily a need for gesso with these. And I'm going to work in sections because I want to use the two colours I'm using together, I want them to blend a little bit together. So I'm going to get a section done and before it dries I'm going to work some of the other paint into it. Hello Dad. Hello Annabelle. Okay. 
Like, this does give me a sore shoulder because I have a bad shoulder. So if you do suffer with sore shoulders, uh, maybe do it in stages and give your shoulder rest every so often. So I'm just going to stop there for a moment and then the other colour I'm going to use is dark turquoise. This is probably my favourite rustic paint one. You can hear that cat back again. Let's get another older sort of paintbrush. So it's this really yummy kind of teal colour. So I'm going to work that into the, um, let me put some in a lid actually so I'm not mixing them together. Nice kind of teal colour. <laughs> Cat. Honestly, it's like a baby. It's not even mine. Wouldn't mind so much if he was my cat. He knows I love it, that's why. Wrapped around my finger. Well, I'm wrapped around his finger, I should say. So we're going to keep switching between colours. Working them together. some of this in the lid as well um, if you're putting the paint in the lid just be careful to wipe it after so you don't get your lids not going on properly okay and hopefully you can see how this is taking shape now um you can of course dry um dry the paints and apply if you don't want the colors to mix together you can do one color and then dry and apply your other totally up to you what look you want to go for yes meow cat i heard you yes i can hear you meow so noisy I've never known a cat like it, honestly. I've had cats. And usually cats are sort of wanting to be on their own, aren't they? They're quite independent and not needy. You know, you're the needy one that wants the attention from the cat. But this cat is something else. It's like having a child, honestly. Right, that's got that kind of section done. And we'll go back with the green teal yes meow I heard you <laughs> meow <laughs> can you hear that meow Go on to the book a little bit, maybe as well. Meow. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Yes, I know. Okay, last section. Oh, thanks for sticking with me. It's quite a big, big surface to fill, so it takes a little bit of time. It's not going to be perfect today because it's, you know, I'm trying to do it quickly for you. I can always come back and touch up bits another time. Okay. Right, and now I'm going to grab the concrete again. So I'm done with that. And can you hear that? The gritty bits in them? Nice. Meow cat, yes. Hello Trish. 
and back with the concrete. <laughs> Hello, Simone. Okay, so before I use those magic paints again, I want to dry this because I don't want this paint to um, be watered down and run about everywhere. I want this to stay nice and crisp, so I need to dry this first a bit. Okay, let me clean the lid. Otherwise, you'll have all the great bits around the edge and the lid will not shut properly. And you will either get dried out paint where the lid is not on properly or you will wedge your lid onto the paint and you won't be able to get it off next time. Neither of which is good. Right, so dry. Now, these do dry quicker than you would think. They're not too bad. And I'm going to use a little bit of wax at the end, I think, to finish it off nicely. So it's good um, contrast as well. This is a matte paint. So um, the magic paints will give a nice shimmer. And then if we use a bit of wax, a bit of sheen as well, so different looks. I need to prop this up a little bit more here. This corner is a bit droopy, I think. So I'll sort that out later as well. Like I did with this cog, I need to do a little bit down here to prop that up. dry enough so I'm gonna go back with some of my powders again now so I'll use turquoise gold I'm gonna go especially where I can see underneath that I didn't paint I'm gonna hope to try and cover some of that with this yes meow we heard you and anything then I still have missed, I can get my brush in there with a bit of wax. So let's just try this one colour first and see how this looks. So water spray again. And it's filling up. have a bit of the of the um, malachite as well no that was malachite no it wasn't that was turquoise I'm not sure now let's have a bit of both yeah and then a little bit of indigo why not let's do all three as I confuse myself oh Come on, lid. Why are you stuck? Get all that activated. So I've got enough water. Go. 
got some nice colours on there now. Right, and dry again. Mm, the blue's picked up really nice on that white. You've got like purpley tones in that uh, coming out more in the indigo as well there now. Because we've used it on the white, I think. That would be good for some shading. And we're almost there now. I'm just going to add some embellishments on top, but I'm not sure it needs it really. And because it's going to be a functional book, I want to be able to use this book. I don't want to damage anything on the front when I've got it open. So I think um, this is fairly flat at the moment. So I might keep it like this, I think. And you can get an idea of how these look on white now. A bit better. Like a little bit more of the indigo in this middle section to create the look of some shadows. That looked really good. Um, so like where the corners are you could put this on your mat and mix it with water would probably be easier but where the light would naturally form shadows I'm going to use that as like a a little darker tone there. <laughs> trying to get enough water Must remember to fill this up the next time. Okay, there we go. We did it. Okay, let's try. You got any little bits that haven't um, mixed with the water? You can just dab it with your brush as well. I like how this gold looks on top of the green. Very pretty. And you can see all the little grains in the paint. When I put the wax on in a moment, you'll really see those picked out. So let's decide. I think we'll go with a gold wax as we've got gold and everything else. This is on the top, so let's use Pentart gold wax paste. another five minutes and we are done folks so do check out the store um, all the products we've used today are on there so you've got chipboards and MDFs from AB Studio and Hobbylicious magic paints and rustic paints from Fabrica Decuru so it's Fabrica with a K F-A-B-R-I-K-A -A, Decuru D-E-C ORU but you'll see it in the brands there or you can search by product um, we've used stencils by 13 arts and by AB studio and all the mediums I used today were fabric de Carreau, so 3d gel clear gesso modeling paste texture paste I should say because we do have a modeling paste this was texture paste Tifa. Yeah, and if anyone does have any questions afterwards or anything, do give me a shout. Right, let's get the wax on. This is a very soft one. Um, I may get my brush actually, just because I'd like to go into some of the layers. And this will pick up all those nice grainy bits in the paint as well. So we're not looking to cover everything. We don't want to cover all that nice paintwork we've done. This just kind of highlights. Or if you feel an area is missing something, this could be the way to brush that up a little bit. Oh, that bit was still very wet. Whoops. I'll do it with my finger. <laughs> Fix that bit. 
if we can. And then wax is great if you've got anything, especially in the background. Okay, <laughs> I think there's a cricket match going on over there. If you've got anything in the background that's perhaps disappeared a little bit, um, the wax can bring that back to the surface. Oops, I did not dry this properly. Okay, I think that's it. I will probably do some finishing touches, maybe a title. Let's have a look quickly for a title. Oh, do I see something that says art in here? Oh, there it is. Create art. Well, there you go. That's perfect for my art journal. So Tim Holtz chip board words. Let's... Um, just stick that on there and this is nice because it's flat as well my 3d gel and i'm gonna leave it at that because i say it's a functional book so i was thinking to have die cuts and all sorts on there as well but because i want to be able to open it and not damage it i think i'm gonna leave it at that so we'll pop that on there which is perfect as it's my art journal hello herman Mimi, I apologise, that's a long name. <laughs> I probably pronounced that completely wrong. Thank you, Trish. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And we did a little alcohol ink demo just before this one as well, if you want to catch that. I'll get these put on the YouTube as well. Um, so there we have it, my new Dina Wakefully art journal cover with rustic paints stenciling and a bit of wax so thank you for joining me thank you margaret yes it's fab and there are different colors so if you wanted to go for more of a rust look rather than this patinery sort of feel you will be able to do that there's browns and reds and oranges and things in there thank you carolyn so thank you for watching um our next post day is probably wednesday this week um, because we are going to see some people on Monday. So depending on how many orders, um, we'll probably pick on Tuesday this week. So if you get your orders on before Tuesday, so by Monday, um, they will go in this week's post. So check out Fabrica Decoru, Hobbylicious and AB Studio, as well as lots of other things, of course, in our shop, thompsonscraftsupplies.com. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.